Okay, good morning and welcome to Ina Mishnah. Today we'll be analyzing Masechus Trumas Perak Dalid, Mishnayos Ted and Yud. Um, there's two different cases in these Mishnayos, and we seemingly pass with Rabbi Yeshua over Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi Lezer was called a Shmusi. He was from Beis We generally pass like Beis Hillel. Um, it's actually two different, seemingly contradictory Piskei Halacha over here, that in Mishnah Tess, right, <coughs> if you have and we said in order to mavat al truma, you need a hundred to one ratio. That's the established Allah. So now let's say you have, um, you have a hundred black dates, uh, black figs, and one hundred, uh, sorry, fifty black figs and fifty white figs, right? Um, and now another one falls in, and you're not sure if it's black or white. So now you have a hundred to one ratio, right? If you consider all the black and white ones one mixture, so you have a hundred mutra ones. And one of truma, so you take out one, and it's no longer medamea. The one you took off is considered truma. That's what Rabbi Yeshua said. Rabbi Yeshua was make like Rabbi Akiva, but only in the case where you don't know what it is. If you knew that it was black, then you can't look at it as a mixture because you have 51 black one, and 50 to one is not a ratio to mavato. The levano is the one that is not that color. If it was a black one, then it fell in, it was truma. So the white ones are mutter, and the black ones are azar. But if you don't know, then you can be make And in, in Mishnah Yud, it's seemingly the opposite psaq, that Yeshua is actually machmir, talking about a cases where you have less than 100 piles, let's say 50 piles, um, and in each pile there's fig cakes, circular fig cakes, circular Yushami kogos, uh, piled very high, 101 piles. And we know the top one is truma. We don't know out of these 50 piles which one, you only place truma on top of one of them. So according to Rabbi Yeshua, he says you have to be machmir because... You can't look at the hundred in each pile independently and say, oh, it's 100 to 1. Because since we know the location of the truma, so it's not considered an irv, it's not considered a mixture, so you can't, you can't move out it. So, <laughs> therefore, you need 100 piles, 100, 101 piles, in order to move out the one on top, because then that would be considered a mixture. And because you don't know, right? Your lack of knowledge considers it all a mixture, even though different piles, separate piles. So what's the explanation? Why? How do we seemingly understand these seemingly contradictory piske halacha? Um, I'd like to suggest over here. Normally, bittel barov. It's a concept in the Torah. Rav lahatos bittel. We use the word bittel barov. You have two pieces of kosher meat and one piece of nevela. It's bittel barov. Now there's different opinions. Are you like how many allowed to eat? Allowed to eat one? Because after I eat one, then it's maybe one to one ratio. Or allowed to eat two. I uh, three. There's actually three different piske alacha. That like suggests that bittel barov means the word bittel barov means nullification. It's nullified, which means the iser is nullified. And I would like to suggest you can eat all three. And yeah, bittel barov. It's a din. It's mavata the rov. But by truma, it's not like that because we don't say bittel barov. The pasuk is min menu, hundred to one. There's no concept of bittel barov. And the fact is that when you even when you have a hundred to one, you still have to take out one, and we assume that one is truma. And I explain, it's like one big uh, tear in your eye, and a little drop comes out from the tear. You have to take that tear out, but it's all one gufecha, it's all the same thing. When you take out that one, so then that thing is the truma, and the rest is chulin. Um, it's one gufecha, it's not bitl baro, because you have to take out one, and the one you take out is truma. It doesn't make the other thing, 101 doesn't make all of them mutter. Still, you have to take out one of them. So it's not a, operating on the, the standards of bitl baro. So we have a new din over here by truma. It's not 100, it's not mavata 1. It's 100 to 1 ratio, you can do a hafrash truma. It allows you, it's a kula, by hafrash truma. Really, the truma is still in there. The kula, the Torah is, is that you can be mafresh 100 to 1, you have 100 to 1, you can be mafresh 1, and assume that is the truma that you're taking out. So it's a kula and hafrash. It's, it's less than that. So in order to establish that we have all the mechanisms needed in order to apply that kula, we need a mixture. We need something, a mixture. So if you have 50 black figs and 50 white figs, so according to Rabbi Yeshua, that's considered a mixture because we don't know where it is. We don't know the lack of knowledge on us. That makes something a mixture, the lack of knowledge where it is. According, But if you have 50 piles and you know exactly where it is in the pile, so therefore... You don't have a mixture. You don't have a mixture because you know it's on the top. So it's not a mixture. It's not mixed together. Um, there's there's a idea. You know you know where it is. Right? You don't know which pile it's in, but you don't have a hundred piles to that for that idea that lack of knowledge to be sufficient lack of knowledge because 
you only have 50 piles, you don't have 100 and one pile, so you only have 50 piles, and that pile itself, even though it's a 100 to 1 ratio, we know where it is, so we're going to have to investigate this more, but this din of Bittal Echab is not a regular din of Bittal Barov, um, it's a different din, it's a kula by Afresh Shruma, you have to actually mafresh the Shruma, and you're going to need a lack of knowledge um, in that pile itself, in that pile, in order to apply this din of Echad Mameya. We're going to get more into this in the coming Mishnayas. See you tomorrow.